Lord, grant me the serenity to understand the things I cannot change. Grant me the courage to change the things that I can. And grant me the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today. Amen. You close to the edge, just don't move. My brother said his lawyer just gave him some bad news. Police found the drugs that were stashed in the bathroom. Not only that, but his court date approaching us fast too. So tell me what to do. Lord, you only seek the truth. If you want to bear fruit, then it needs to abide in you. If you seek transformation, it happens in solitude. Since I never had a shot, God threw me the alley hoop. I believe I can fly. Let me mingle with the angels. Heaven's in my peripheral. I see it from an angle. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your boy, bro, Troy. Bro, Smith. Bro, Kurt. And we are the Bro, bro Code. Code. The Bro Code TV show was created to, to share unique and courageous stories that amplify the voices of others, speak life into our community, and celebrate the humane side of humanity. The Code is a set of standards or values a person lives by. The Code sets the tone for how we treat all people, starting with ourselves. The code matures into the bro code when we are fortunate enough to find men that share those same values and standards. Tonight's show is sponsored by Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure to go to PapaMurphy'sPizza.com and sign up for My Slice Rewards to be in the know for exclusive deals, sneak peeks, and savings for the Papa Murphy's My Slice Reward family. What's happening, fellas? How y'all feeling, man? Feel good, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 I gotta say, it, another one. Right? Yeah. So yeah. here we are, man, in another setting, another space to do this bro code thing, man, and make it happen, man. I'm excited about tonight. The guest that we have tonight really kind of amplifies the question that we start with. So let's kick it off with this: Are you a Marvel or what's the other people name? DC. Oh, oh DC. No, Excuse no, me, no, no, <laughs> my man, my man, or a DC comic type of guy and if so who like who do you rock with man so we always start at the end bro what you got bro Kirk? yeah i'm gonna have to go with uh now now i grew up on dc i think mm. we all did but mm. marvel for yeah. sure marvel okay. and here's why i, I avengers i, I like mm. the, the team atmosphere yeah. they always have to come together to mm-hmm. do the work right mm-hmm. I, I, something about that i love yeah so. i could do Definitely that marvel. i could do that what, mm. what, what you got here sir <laughs> I am uh I'm bigger on DC. Mm. Uh part of that is Marvel's kind of marveled me out, you know, with the, the litany of character and character and character and movie after movie after movie. I just think DC has better backstories to their mm. characters. They they flush out the death of who the person is yeah. behind the mask, behind the cape, so to speak, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit better than Marvel. I can think that. They kind of peel the lens and, and peel the, the onion back a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm on action, big on action, so I'm going Marvel, man. I'll be honest with you, the uh, I got to go back to as a kid, X-Men. I've always wow. been uh, a Wolverine guy, so I followed the whole saga, even when they started all over again. Uh, touch and go, mm-hmm. to your point for someone, but I think they did really well on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I gotta go with Marvel. So, fellas, anyway, you know, nothing great happens alone, right? And tonight's no different. We are in a, a live studio, man. This dude right here, I, I want to hear his question. So, for those that don't know, this is the man, the myth, the legend, Sean Kearney. Sean, I, before we ask you to run your resume, what are your thoughts on that, man? So we talked about Marvel and uh, what up, DC? Oh yeah, DC. So no, <laughs> it's easy for what me. Do you think? So I mean, I think most people, well, a lot of people, will fall into whatever first comic they picked up. Yeah. And so I just stumbled into Spider-Man during an era mm. where it was so good. Mm. This Todd McFarlane era, and uh, and and that's what brought me in. And then ever, ever since, and I connected with the character. He was like a nerd, yeah. and he had this whole side other life to him, and then uh, and so I just connected with all of that, mm. uh, and that never really stopped, really. Well, let me let me ask you this on Spider Man. There's been three different versions of Spider Man in the, the cinematic universe right mm. now. Yeah, who would you say has done the most justice to Spider Man? Oh, I think Tom Holland, like by a million shot. Mm. I think mostly because Marvel took the. Uh, the brand in and under its umbrella, so they were able to develop the character in a way that was more authentic. But I think you get more of that, um, uh, not necessarily sensitivity, but that like access to his like worries and his concerns outside of the superhero world, mm. where the other ones were almost all superhero focused. With his character, they really dug into like him as a teenager yeah. and all of the weird shit yeah. that happens when you're a teenager. Mm. And so, and really, that's what was like appealing about that character was that. 
uh, he was just a kid that mm. stumbled into this and had to make the best out of it and made a terrible mistake early on by getting uh, by thinking he was bigger than he was yeah. and lost a family member and then was like and so again for that I just you know I've always been attracted to that kind of storyline mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's good yeah. yeah kind of reflects on real life too you, know? you can kind of so dig that yeah. indeed yeah. indeed so for those that don't know man we already dug into the Marvel DC but in 90 seconds or less, man, run us your resume. Let Put some respect in your name. Let the people know who you are. Gotcha. Well, um, which camera should I be? It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah you just follow with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, 90 seconds. My, uh, I grew up in Detroit for mm. uh, the first Mich 10 years. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Somebody else? <laughs> uh, yeah, the first 10 years of my life were spent in Detroit. Uh, then moved to Philly for mm. the next 10, roughly. Mm. Uh, so I got a good kind of mix of the two. Uh, from there, in my high school years, I got drawn into the graffiti scene yeah. uh, deeply. Uh, and so I really found a, a deep passion and connection with that whole subculture. Found was also messing around with drawing my whole life. Well, not my whole since I was a kid, and um, and then kind of wormed my way through different kinds of creative passions. Mm -hmm. Mostly, and initially, I didn't know how to live as an illustrator, so I worked as a designer for like 15, 20 ish years, and then uh, since then, left my corporate job and uh, ultimately to paint murals. Not, yeah. I didn't leave to paint, but now I left my job and am now painting murals. Yeah, yeah. I, silly question, man, but I gotta ask, like, obviously this is a passion for you. Now I understand why there's so many Philly tributes oh, yeah. in this room. Like, I've never been in this room before, <laughs> but for you saying you've been there for 10 years, it, I'm starting to catch on. So I do have more questions, but we'll get to that. But if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Well, right now I would be what, whatever it took to keep the family going. Right? Yeah. It was what I'd be doing. So, like, I think about that sometimes, like, because in painting murals, there's a lot of physical risk associated. Lots mm. of, mm. I'm staying on top of, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, real high up there, and yeah. I'm on lifts and ladders. And I think, like, damn, if I got hurt, what would I do? And what I, what I realize is that the, the stuff that I learned in order to keep me going as a mural artist, you can pretty much take that and apply it to other stuff. Sure. And so based on what my whatever it was that prevented me from doing this, hmm. I would find what my next best utility was and yeah. push all of what I learned and whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm probably teaching them, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's keep the meat and spit out the bone. What you got, Rosemary? Well, I, I looked at your bio, and I'm, I'm gonna read a little bit about how you described yourself. Okay. You know, you say you were a bona fide left brain, right brain guy whose eclectic skill set is buried in his comic book collection, yes. which we may get into a little bit of that. Uh, but Motown, Philadelphia, and growing roots in Raleigh, making murals, publishing magazines, and helping to grow a digital product company. I, I, I want you, though, to take us back a little bit. Help us understand the man behind the paint can. Like, what were you like as a child? Um, how did all of this this spark creativity inside of you. Yeah, uh, well, I, I love that question because I don't get to actually reflect on my childhood as much as I'd like to, to be honest. And really, it was during those years that were super formative. So uh, in Detroit, uh, my mom had me when she was young. Mm. And so, uh, I'm honestly, the product of a, a one-night stand frat party, like, okay. went sideways. <laughs> and then my, my, mom just, my mom didn't even tell my grandparents that she was pregnant with me mm. until she went to labor. And so uh, they found out when my aunt was like, hey, Ma, I mm. was in labor, you know. Uh, and so I kind of really arrived like um, more of an explosion than some sort of like <laughs> planned event. Uh, yeah, literally, and, right? Yeah. yeah. And so during those, those years when I lived with my mom, my aunt, uh, I was an only child. Um, I think during those years in, in that environment, uh, I didn't realize the economics and how depressed things were and like I didn't you know I grew up there so I didn't really understand that there was anything else but that but I realized in reflecting on it being a latchkey kid in that type of um, area where there's just so many people so hungry that I developed a unique creative outlook on things mm -hmm. and a way to kind of connect with people and see through things so as I've grown from that kind of core youth and then my teenage years in Philly where they just like beat the shit out of me and just yeah. like hard I was like soft in Detroit people, people don't realize that like well, people often forget that Detroit is really close to Canada mm. and it's very midwestern mm -hmm. in general so it's very folksy it's very friendly in the, for the most part so like I was in like a really rough neighborhood and I go back now and it's even gotten worse 
uh, and uh, I was soft. Mm -hmm. I was just like a mm -hmm. sweet kid. Mm -hmm. So I showed up in Philly, 10 years old, like, hey, you yeah. know, and they were just <laughs> ready with the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> in West Philadelphia, <laughs> born and raised. Yeah. Really, they were not playing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was just a different yeah. environment, all top to bottom. And, you mm -hmm. know, when they say, like, you know, the Philly fans boo their own team, that's really yeah. how it is even in the neighborhoods. Like, mm -hmm. they'll boo their own people. They'll fiercely defend them from anybody outside of that. Mm -hmm. They're still there. But, like, they're that, that, that is pretty unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> so toxic, right? right, right. Pretty toxic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's part of me that is glad that I had that experience because it did um, sharpen some edges where they were just a little too round. Mm. You know what I mean? It was just a little too soft. Mm. And when you when I, you, you kind of come into the real world, like nobody's carrying you. Nobody cares. Right. So mm. like you, you kind of have to have a little bit of that or, or a moderate amount of that uh, oomph mm. and the ability to read people, gauge danger, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so really between those two things, I became an artist. I started getting the drawing because uh, when I was in Philly, uh, I was like fourth grade, uh, I was getting hammered in terms of like bullying. They were just kind of coming at me all the time. And I had traced this picture of Abraham Lincoln that I had in the mm. dictionary. It was a drawing of him and it was a cartoon of him when I traced it. And this dude, uh, Carnell Scott, someone mm. was damning, he was like, oh, dang, you, you drew that? And I was like, it was the first time anybody had been like, nice to me like that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I drew it. He's like, whoa, I don't know, you draw, you draw me something. I'm like, I'll bring it tomorrow, you know? Because <laughs> I couldn't draw. And so I got home, and then my, uh, my mom had actually, when we moved to Philly, we moved because she started dating a guy that uh, ended up, she married him as my dad. But, uh, uh, so his family, some of his family had a picture book that had these dinosaurs in it. So I would just go home and trace these dinosaurs and I'd bring them to school and be like, yeah, Drew, you were a dinosaur, Drew, dinosaur. <laughs> and uh, they're like, oh, wow, they're like, draw, draw a dinosaur, but like with something else. And I'd be like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I realized over time that the more I was drawing these dinosaurs, the more my mind understood the, the path. Mm. And so it wasn't really like, that's why I got, mm. I don't have a problem, but I would take issue to a certain degree of people say oh you got such a gift i'm like uh no it was actually more of like a uh goal <laughs> like, it was very more of like it's something that you had to actually decide you want and then work really really hard at and which is also a gift to have the ability to do that but like um ultimately that's where i ended up getting to where i am now because then i just never stopped because mm -hmm. then i was like oh art is protection for me yeah. Being able to create something like this is actually a mode of protection. I actually did a ton of research a number of years ago about different ways that art is strength mm. in uh, the prison system and in inner city neighborhood. I mean, in the military, yeah. there's, there's a lot of areas where like creatives rise to the top just mm -hmm. for being creative. Because uh, often it's looked at as kind of a soft uh, profession, but... Um, but there, in a lot of areas, it's just not. So yeah. anyway, that's a, I, that's a long form way of saying my, that my youth really, I'm like a total product in summary of my experience as a kid. Now, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, would you say you have a, a particular approach or style uh, when it comes to the artwork that you create? Totally. So uh, typically, I think the style that just kind of fell out from my process is one that is heavy graffiti influenced, mm -hmm. uh, but also kind of pulls a lot from traditional illustration yeah. uh, stuff. Uh, and so it's that unique kind of blend, I think, that, that juxtaposition that, that allows me to stand out. So I have a lot of flex in that space. I can either like get very kind of graphic and bold, or I can be, get realistic and like very realistic, or I can blend the two, as you can kind of see like mm -hmm. all these around here. Are, are, a unique blend of a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah definitely. We see it. We're going to talk all about that too. We, definitely, man. And let's let the people know who we got here. So. From Philly, we got my man AI. Who else we got here, Bro Smith? Uh, we got Mike Tyson and the Pigeon. And the Pigeon? Who, 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 who we got over here? You know, we got the B.I.G. Yeah. B.I.G. P.I.G.A. That's, that's, so, that's that. And you man. see that detail, man. So I, I definitely understand what you're talking about, man. I, I'm curious. Um, like, what did you start off with tracing? Like, did you go from tra How did you gravitate? towards the graffiti like how, how did it go what was the the progress uh, that you know? so basically in high school uh i had a core group of friends my freshman year still my friends to this day we, mm. we play poker every tuesday online uh and and so um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh and so but in 10th grade they split us all up because we we're good mm. and so i just ended up in a track with nobody else that i that was from that group 
and so I connected with a friend, uh, mm. with a, with the, one of the other, only other kids there, and he was already painting graffiti in West Philly, actually. And mm. so, me and him were, would draw on our desks and draw, and he was like, you know, you should come out with us, man, be like our character guy, and do our backgrounds and characters. And I was like, all right, you know, that sounds exciting. And I was always kind of drawn to that kind of uh, risk taking in general. Mm. And so. Um, mm. Yeah, it sounded like a perfect mix. It was yeah, like art and risk taking, yeah, and it was right. like you know. Uh, yeah. And so, once I started, I couldn't really. I mean, it's it's a weird kind of thing, and I think uh, I see a lot of people that once they catch a bug with some mm. kind of passion, it just weaves into their DNA, mm -hmm. it weaves into their mm -hmm. code. So they're like, uh, you know, it, that's how it was for me. I yeah. just never really stopped after that. Uh, I painted a ton illegally, and then when that, when that kind of petered out, when I got in, I got arrested a couple. Of and ended up being a whole big problem but then i still didn't stop mm. you know i still kind of kept painting and then got to where i just got older mm. and the risk reward really started to shift once the kids yeah, were yeah, depending yeah. on me and yeah, i was like yeah, yeah. nah it ain't a good look it's fine to like be painting in the style and do stuff but like when you have kids and you get pinched for graffiti in your 30s that yeah. is a bad look <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> i don't know how you spin that but uh the, the only time I uh, forayed into graffiti myself was at the Freedom at Free Expression Tunnel oh, yeah. uh, at NC State. It's uh, for those that don't know, it's it's got all sorts of artwork, good, bad, and indifferent, yeah. uh, for different different tastes. But uh, recently, in 2020, uh, you painted it to celebrate the the graduates, uh, to oh, where yeah. that was the year that everybody got sent home. Nobody was coming in. Morale was pretty low. Tell me a little bit about how that project came to be and what was that like for your uh, contribution to the students. Yeah, I, I actually, my relationship with NC State's been so great. My wife went there, uh, and so when I moved down here, she was a student there, and I would just hang out in the design classes. Mm. Uh, and the teachers were cool. I made friends with the design teachers, uh, Tony Brock, who's just a, a great guy, super talent. And uh, I would paint in the tunnels during that time, also just paint socially. Mm. Fast forward, I started getting offers from like brands to like do stuff there. They would like pay me to like like Red Bull would like to promo mm -hmm. something, and then once I did a couple of those, then NC State was like, hey, like we should do more official stuff like that, and so that opened up a whole like world of stuff that we would do in the tunnel. We'd film it, mm -hmm. and then we'd have a whole life online, even though we'd get gone over like immediately almost because mm -hmm. nothing lives on its own. But uh, <laughs> it, it's a, it really like nothing. It doesn't matter how good it is. Yeah, nothing lives there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it, not at all. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> that that one in particular, it was uh, it was during COVID, and they wanted to do something special. And so uh, kind of did this cool graffiti themed celebration of the work that they had done because they got shorted on their graduation stuff. So uh, it was really an honor to be a part of that. We're checking in right here with the man, the myth, the legend, mural sensation, Sean Kernick. We're live right here in his studio at the home with the bro code. We'll be right back. We'll be right back on the bro code show after a brief word from our sponsors. We all we got. This show is sponsored by Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza. Make sure to visit your local Papa Murphy's Pizza retail store near you and load up on fresh made-to-order gluten-free Take and Bake pizzas, desserts, and salads. Now make sure to use that mobile app for faster and to earn additional savings. We always say that hope plus options equals success. When there's a lack of hope, oftentimes gravitate towards unfavorable decisions. When we can provide hope plus options, our children will ultimately be better. Uh, through love, consistency, opportunity, and exposure, that's how we really touch these kids. That's how we empower them, that's how we inspire them, and that's how we encourage them. And that's what we do well here at Wine for Children. The Bro Code TV show was created to amplify the voices of others and share courageous stories of community leaders, organizations, and businesses that are doing great things. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., you can catch Bro Troy, Bro Kirk, and Bro Smith for another courageous conversation. You can find those conversations on our YouTube channel at Bro Code TV Productions and also our audio podcast channels, which are on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, 
and Google Podcast at The Bro Code Show. Tap in to The Bro Code Experience. We all we got. Welcome back to the Bro Code Show. We got my man Sean Kernick. We're right here in his home, live in his home studio. What you got, Bro Kirk? First of all, Sean, I want to go back to something you said about growing up in Detroit. You were saying something about a one night stand. And as men, man, I, I want to always call out when there's a level of transparency about something in our past mm. that a lot of us bury and don't talk about. So there you were, just boom, just like this is what it was. Yes. So, yeah. man, I, I love that, man. So I just wanted you to. I uh, appreciate it. Well, I like to normalize things that sometimes people think are, are strange. I, and, and that in particular, I like to normalize because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, I was I was born out of wedlock or I wasn't a planned kid. And I'm like, yo, you understand biology? Nobody's planned. They yeah. pick you. You were in competition with a million other million, little sperm in there. Right. The odds of you being you is one in like hundreds of trillions. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. nobody's planned. Sure. Uh, everybody, it, it's like, a miracle that any of us even are us. Mm-hmm. A miracle beyond miracles. So like I always just like telling the story as it is to normalize any kind of Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Thank you for the transparency. Yeah, so I'm drive I'm driving I'm a coffee lover. Oh nice. Yeah. I'm driving in, in Garner. Yeah, okay. Like, man, I Google I mean best coffee. I, full bloom pops up. Nice. So I drive through downtown to go to it and all I see is this amazing mural. Yeah. Tell yep. us a little bit about that that uh, Project. I know it was a, a big partnership with a couple of different agencies. Yep. The bros are all about partnerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So yeah. talk to us about that mural and how it came to be. So um, the angle that I think people might benefit from, especially if they're interested in, in a creative profession or pursuing their creative passions, is that the whole reason I even got that gig was because uh, I, uh, somebody from um, Wake Forest had reached out to me and said, hey, we have this uh, grant from the... Uh, North Carolina Arts Council, and uh, we wanted you to um, come and apply for it. And this is when I first was doing murals. It was, it, like, I didn't even know I was going to be able to do it full time at this point. And so I was like, uh, "All right, cool." So I went and I like presented to the board, and I didn't get it. And so I came back, and I was like, "You know, they said that they were on like their last couple of weeks of getting this, of making a decision, but they had a lot of time. I wonder who else got." this offer and had, didn't take action on mm-hmm. it yet. And so I called the Arts Council and I was like, yo, I didn't get that one, but like, did you give this to any other municipalities in the area? And they were like, yeah, Garner and Fuquay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, can I, can I contact them? Is that like legal or cool? I don't really know how it works. They're like, yeah. So I contacted Garner mm-hmm. and because I, I didn't wait for things to come to me, I was like, I went to them, I just was on top of the pile. And so when I got that, uh, you're right, it was the Arts Council, and then we worked with people in Garner and Full Bloom, uh, and we created this this very unique mural that's about change and upward momentum and, um, uh, you know, life in bloom and all this kind of new life that's out there. Mm. But my favorite lesson that I pulled from that experience is that when I was up on the lift, I was making friends with people as they came by to talk. And I know a lot of people will... I say, hey, I'm working, or they have their headphones in, and I and I learned on that job that I made friends with the. Uh, there was a guy that was working a construction site right across the street. There was like a uh, that's now like a rec center, mm-hmm. and he would come out in his coffee and on on the, this porch of his little uh, uh, thing that he was working out of, and I started talking with him. And I started making friends with him. That me making friends with him made it so that when he found he heard somebody needed a painter for inside that rec center yeah. he was like hey the guy across the street's cool and he's doing work they came out uh and offered me that and because i got that it led to a branch of work like it literally the the garner one just branched out to a whole bunch of different opportunities and i learned from that that i was like on a job, you always make friends yeah. with whoever it is. You always listen to what they're saying, always mm-hmm. answer questions. Because uh, the more I've done that, the more tributaries are formed from those like rivers initially. You know. Mm-hmm. So for our listeners, he said two things that you really want to yeah. take away. Yeah. Number one is be proactive. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. Make the call. Nobody gets discovered. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then number two, build build great relationships. Yes. No matter where you are, make and friends be, with be everybody. Present, right? Like yeah. make friends with everybody. It doesn't matter if you think, oh, this is an important person. It like 
Erase all of that. Yeah. If somebody's coming up to you, it's because they're interested in the things that you're doing. And that's a privilege and an honor, period. Mm -hmm. So, like, showing the respect for that, it just... It just makes sense anyway. You look at it, you know. So, so yeah, I, I told we all we agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Now, speak to this. You you said earlier that you have worked with some company, a lot of companies, and I was on your website and saw some of those. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about those, and then second, on a quick question, what's your dream project? Mm -hmm. So, I uh, worked with a lot of brands. A lot of those brands are. Um, I do a whole line of illustration and design work still. And I do a lot of work for clients that involve banner ads, illustrations, animations with a buddy. Matter of fact, the dude who brought me on to start painting graffiti, mm. he has a, a company in New York that he's been working for years, and he does decoding for these animated banner ads. Uh, but I'm basically like a ghost writer artist, you know. Like I, so so we've done stuff. We've done like the uh, animations for Disney and stuff. Mm, with wow. um, uh, we've done a, a wide variety of, of, of like high level clients with Amex. A lot of the all all the basically all any banner ad you see now that has illustrations on it that are like animated. I drew in here in this office. Um, in I, I saw four. I saw MTV. Yeah. I don't want to skip any. I'm just saying. Yeah. No. You know. So yeah, MTV. We did a bunch of stuff for them when I was in New York. Mm. Uh, I, w I actually worked there for a number of years, uh, off and on at freelancing. Uh, and so, but the MTV was also part of the banner ad stuff that we were doing also. Mm. And so, um, Ford. We, I did a series of uh, storyboards for a presentation that they were doing, and I was doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, it my last main gig is that it was all Fortune 500 companies and I would do uh, like illustrated, um, like if we were trying to describe a scenario to them or they were trying to describe uh, a scene that I would do all of the storyboard illustrations for it. But what's weird is that like um, when you're branding yourself as a creative, it really pays to promote very specific offers. Be and, and you can do that in two separate places. You can say, oh, you can have like a channel that's like your mural channel and then your illustration channel is a separate channel. But like if you blend it, people who are hiring get confused. And they're like, they, or they think that you're split, your, your attention is split, even though it's not. Uh, and so that's why a lot of the stuff you see now is like, uh, it's all murals on my site, almost exclusively. I'm about to change it though, uh, actually, because I'm, I'm trying to, the, I got injured a couple times doing murals, and it's just too dangerous to be 100% of my income. It's like, <laughs> like literally, if I get sick or if I fall or anything, like all the money stops. Like that day, it stops, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just reckless. Well, you could take pictures of it, make an NFT out of all the art. I, that's I, 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 that's, I, I, that's what you should. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. like that really a great extension of your yeah. Work, yeah, it's a, it's a very strange place, the NFT land in general. Uh, I know there's a lot of like strange feelings about it, but uh, I've been swimming in it. I, basically, my methodology when I want to get in something new is like, uh, I I don't just jump in like ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I really don't believe in fake it till you make it like at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't actually don't think that's even like a thing um, because people can see through the mm -hmm. fake-ish. It's better to just be honest uh, and make it. <laughs> like you go in and say, yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I really want to do this. Then people will trust you. Uh, but, um, but I'm in this like learning phase, yeah. and so uh, I'm working with a couple guys on a project that seems to be traditional in that space. But once I started learning about what the NFT world is, mm. then I started being like, oh wait a minute, like okay, so sure people are selling like pictures of monkeys and all those kinds, of, but like that's not what this is. Mm. Like they just took this platform and and a bunch of people decided to create a collectible market that they could kind of pump and dump and do all this weird stuff with. I didn't really want to play that game because mm. that looks like a weird kind of dangerous game. Yeah. Uh, but what I do, what I am in interested in, is opening up the ability to for the a global market to help fund projects that could be local, mm. projects that would likely never be able to get funding locally. You could inspire group ownership in making things happen on a platform where that value rises as you rise. Mm. So like, and my other favorite thing that I realized when I was looking at it, I was like, oh wait, this is kind of like 
the NFT land is kind of like if you could you could issue an IPO on you. You could say, hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit my job to like become an artist, but uh, it's gonna be tough in the beginning. So I'm issuing this NFT that's gonna be my rookie card basically. And if my if things go the way that I want, that thing is gonna increase significantly in value. If it doesn't. Sorry, but uh, you know that's how stocks work. That's how they work in general. So, like um, the idea of that and the mobility that it could create for young creatives or creatives that don't have access to money uh, is very interesting to yeah. me. I mean, if you basically have Wi-Fi in a in a phone, you suddenly have access to a global market. And I know that that's a little pie in the sky talk, but. Mm-hmm. Not really, not really. I mean, I see. I, I haven't even been in that long. And I'm seeing these these streets, and I'm like, whoa. Uh, why isn't anybody talking about this street? Yeah. Like this street's exciting. When people make a million dollars. I don't really think they're even making a million dollars. I think there's a lot of games being played in that space. And I think the board ape world in general is nothing more than millennial. Uh, Freemasons type. Ooh, that's good right there. We're going to talk more about that. If you're just checking in, we got my man Sean Kernan. We're live in his home studio on the Bro Code Show. We'll be right back. Since I never had a shot, God threw me to Ellie Hoop. I believe I can fly. Let me mingle with the angels. Heaven's in my peripheral. We'll be right back on the Bro Code Show after a brief word from our sponsors. We all we got. Yeah. When I'm gone. When I'm gone. Who? Who gets your love? Bella on the camera. To leave a legacy is bottom line. Missions only designed to recoup distorted times. If every step is important, I pray you order mine. The marathon continues till I reach the borderline. What's up, good people? It's your boy, Bro Troy, a.k.a. Mr. Wine4T, but better known as Coach TJ. And we are the Bro Code. You see the fellas. We got new gear swag on deck. We are out here, man. We got the Lavelle Moten Mural. The public unveiling today starts at noon. We are on the corner of Hargett and Salisbury, right. right in front of the Black Friday Market in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, we have a special guest. I don't know if he is the special special, but he is a special He's guest special, because yeah. this wouldn't be up here if he wasn't here. His name is Sean Kernick. There we go. And he is the artist for the Lavelle Moten Mural. Sean, what's happening, brother? How you doing, man? Yeah, all right, doing good. Pleasant to have you, man. Come and shot here. Oh, yeah, we got a wide angle, baby. Man. Yeah, you you can't can't see right. Right. Up, man. I'm curious, man. So I was talking to your wife three weeks. You yes. have an intern. This is all blood, sweat, and tears. Yep. What does it mean to you, man? What does it feel? How does that feel to you? Uh, I feel uh, pride is what mm-hmm. it feels like because um, not only was it a, a, an achievement, you know, to paint something so big, yeah. but to honor uh, Lavelle and to be a part of the whole project, yeah. especially with the city growing so fast and yeah. people don't really know who they are and lost. And to, to really put a spotlight on somebody who makes this place mm-hmm. so such a good place to come to for all these people and really to identify like who we are. Yeah. It'd be a part of that. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it doesn't get better than that. With the angels, heavens in my periphery, I see it from my angle. What's happening, good people? It's your boy, bro, Troy. We're back here on the Bro Coat Show. Got my man, Sean Kernick. Sean, we've talked about a lot, man, but our passion uh, are children, right? You yes. are a father. Uh, before we were talking about, before the show started, about basketball games and how you support everything. Yeah. But when it comes to the kids, um, we know that you're big on the arts. Yeah. And a lot of the funding, especially here in North Carolina, has suffered. And yeah. one of the first programs that normally is, is cut is the creative part, yeah. which comes with the arts, yeah. right? Uh, which comes with dance and, and things of that nature. But you're heavy on that. You're also an advocate for the arts program, visual arts program. I want you to talk about that, but more so, you know, what can you use that for, for kids that are thinking about it, that maybe were picked on and bullied like yourself and are using this as a tool mm-hmm. to be more... Um, confident yes. in what they do like how important is that well uh to address the the funding in schools mm. issue i always thought it was the dumbest thing to cut the creative arts because uh the creative arts are what make us human mm. and the most successful humans are the ones that are the best at creative problem solving mm. so you cut out 
the real kind of secret sauce yeah. of success, yeah. which is not a shocker to me because we're still kind of <clears throat> operating in a in a format of school that was really designed to make workers. Mm. It wasn't really it wasn't really designed to mm. make yeah. innovative, creative uh, change makers. Right. Unless you go into the nicer schools, they got a different format. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> seriously, I mean, and I see you can see it as you. It, I've had the luxury of riding a, a, a path in my life that where I was able to sit at the table of the spectrum of socioeconomic earners. Yeah. And, and what I see on that journey is one where you have just about the same seven or eight people, mm. I would say, mm. like the lazy bums, the do-gooders, the attitude, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the savers. The yeah. It's always the same kind of like, the main difference is that they don't ever go outside of their bubbles everybody's kind of forced into their space and so unfortunately when it comes to the control that money can have mm. in a kid's life in people's lives uh that their options are limited their view of the world is very limited That's in right. a lot of ways That's absolutely it's right. limited to you know humans are i like to say humans are um incentive driven repetition machines hmm. <laughs> where we're just hmm. like left on devices we will do exactly as mom dad did uh, unless we're incentivized to change a little bit, yeah. but then we're still going to repeat, repeat, repeat. And so I, I, I hope at this point in my career, I want to do far more projects that make an actual impact and not only helping kids see that uh, the, the, the bubble that they live within is a self-imposed concept, mm -hmm. that there is a whole world outside of this, but that the skills that they, that make them uniquely them are highly valuable yeah um and and so and i know for certain that those uh that kind of talk and that kind of understanding works because it worked for me yeah that's uh, absolutely right. and so uh, i just there's just not nearly enough of that going on and so um i'm actually i just spoke with uh boys and girls club okay uh, i was actually um just a couple days ago and mm -hmm. i had this program speaking on comic books yeah i got this program i did it a couple times at different schools i love it where we basically uh, have the kids write uh, a list of things that they feel powerless to overcome in their lives. Mm. It's a secret list. Nobody's going to see that list. Mm. And on the other side of the list, we have superpowers that yeah, would yeah. allow them to overcome those. If you can invent anything, you know, mm. um, you know, if if your dad is is always coming home drunk mm. or something, then your superpower could be to like you know dry out the world, some something, something yeah, like this, right? Yeah. And then we tear yeah. out the the powerless part and we ceremoniously trash it, and then we character design from the powers, and then we do logo design, uh, fashion design, the uniforms. We do a little backstory. We wow. do writing, origin story stuff, design, uh, and illustration. So it's not just like a lot of times people think it's just drawing. Oh, I'm an artist because I draw. Mm. Really, in today's world, you're an artist if you can think creatively, full stop. You know? yeah. uh, and everybody yeah. can think creatively. So. You said a whole lot, man. So the last two cornerstones of the work that we do is opportunity and exposure. Mm. Uh, I oftentimes say that hope plus options equals success. Mm. You know, when yes. you lack hope, when you lack options, you oftentimes gravitate things that don't bring success. Yep. So that's hope the that's what you bring, right? That's what you open up to. And you're passionate about what you do. Like you, your tone changes, the, your, your body language mm. changes. And when you talk about your oh, passion, cool. and it's the same thing with the child, yeah. right? Finding their spark, finding their why, and then pouring onto that yeah, yeah. by exposing them to that. I love it, man. I love it. What you got, Bro Smith? Well, I, I want to go back to where we at least first met yeah. for, yes. for, formally. It was at the unveiling of this huge mural in downtown Raleigh to yeah. celebrate uh, the work and achievement of Lavelle Moton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, from talking with your wife and some others, um, it, they told us it took you three weeks, yeah. you know, up on the scaffold to, to paint this mural. I, I, so. I'm curious, what was it like, the, just the painting process, working with Adam, uh, the gentleman who designed yeah. the mural, and you know, what did that mean to you? Uh, so, I could have probably done it faster. <laughs> <laughs> Show off! Uh, yeah, you know, hold my beer. I say, right? it, yeah, I say it only because <laughs> when I, as part of that creative journey, as you guys probably know, with when you start to do the shows, you start realizing, oh, wait a minute, Success isn't here, it's here. And so success as a professional mural artist for me is in speed uh, and quality, but like speed's a big one. And so, but I had started uh, this, this 
schedule where I was not going all the time full speed because it was not healthy. Okay. But uh, but it was an honor and a privilege for real uh -huh. uh, to even be invited. And the process itself was a stretch because I was painting somebody else's design. And at first, it was like an uncomfortable fit. And I was like, uh. But as soon as the wheel started turning, I was like, oh, wait. This is what I needed. That's this is that like incentive to change my repetition. I was forced to change the way that I paint, and because of that, a whole world of new types of painting came out of that. And the way that that all came together, it's one of those things where I go out of my way to drive by it, mm. just to like peek at it, and I'm like, I feel pride about how it came together. I feel pride about being involved in a project that honors somebody like Lavelle Moton. I feel pride in the fact that it's located a few blocks down from where yeah. we just tore down that damn statue, those monuments. Mm -hmm. uh, it's There's mm -hmm. so much to feel pride about uh, with that that um, yeah, I just glow even just thinking about it. Yeah, I literally go out of my way to see it just to give me that kind of spark. Uh, yes. But yeah, and then I met you guys there, which yeah. is another, yeah. Yeah, it was just all yeah. good all around. Yeah, I'm sure many people, I, I do the same thing too, fellas. You know, not outside of the, the fact that uh, Black Friday Market is right there on the corner, right? Yeah. So it's very familiar, yeah. very familiar. But just the other day, I rode by it. Honestly, yeah, I was actually going to the market, and I couldn't help it. I had to go right into the parking lot and kind of gaze at it. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it means a lot. And it's not too far from where you grew up, you mm, know, on right. Main Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, indeed, man. What you got, bro, Kurt? So, man, it's, it's a little difficult, but I, we, we got to know. Yeah. You got to pick one. So it's like picking your favorite child. <laughs> Of all your murals, first of all, how many have you painted? Do you have any idea? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'd probably say like maybe like 50? 50, mm -hmm. okay. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give us, about three give years. Give um, Yeah, this is hard, actually. So Lavelle Moton mm -hmm. is, if not number one, mm -hmm. number one, two or one. one it's got to, yeah, because it really, it, it was, um, I think you said the big reset. It was kind of the big reset for me in that zone because I needed to make a change in my life. Hmm. Uh, I was going full throttle. My dad had just passed away right before I was painting that, like literally right when it, and he was a community organizer in Philadelphia. He was the guy that brought me and my mom out of Detroit and into Philly and really kind of changed the direction, the trajectory of my whole life. And uh, and it just happened to time itself with the kind of project that he would have, was always getting on me about, man. He's like, yeah, yeah. you've got to do murals that mean something, man. You can't just be painting whatever. And so, mm -hmm. and it, so it fact that it timed itself with that, uh, and then it came together the way that it did, and then to go, uh, that's got to be my favorite. I mean, um, I don't even know. There's been so many other fun ones. Yeah. Like, there were some that I painted where I, I walked away, and I was like, oh. Like, there's one on Capitol Boulevard that has... Um, uh, a woman with her hair it's got all this kind of wild creative stuff going on there and that was the first one I painted where I was like oh I think I might have leveled up like then that's a right. good feeling where you're like mm. oh damn I didn't realize I was doing a level up and so but the Lavelle Moton one was just like a level up times 10 so well certainly we want to offer our condolences uh, on oh, your loss you. uh, but one last question at least for me we were talking briefly in regards to how you, this wasn't always a full-time thing for you, mm -hmm. and you made this transition to yeah. doing this full-time. I won't share your age or anything, yeah. but... Yeah. No, you can't. I don't uh, know. You know, at 40. Yeah, I quit my job at 40. Yeah. Quit your job at 40 and did this full-time. Like, for those who are even thinking about pursuing their passion and yeah. pursuing something, especially that late in life, mm -hmm. you know, talk to us a little bit about, about just the mindset shift yeah. to be able to do that. So I had a thing that just kind of happened where I started thinking about what I wanted my next decade self to look like, mm -hmm. about mid-decade. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was like 25, I was like, oh, damn, I can't be getting drunk and getting crazy in, in Brooklyn when I'm 30. Like, I got to get the hell out of here. Yeah. And, so at that, and so then by 30, I had already moved here. I got married and I had both kids actually by 30. Mm. And so and then by 35, I was like, Oh damn! I can't just live my whole life working corporate. Like, damn, man, that would be a bummer. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so then I was like, well, how, but how am I going to do it? Right. And so it doesn't just it doesn't just happen. I started, you know, initially we started. Uh, it was like I started doing events, and then from those events, I started doing a magazine, and then from the magazine, it started getting bigger. And I was like, oh, this might be able to work. And I quit my job to do the magazine, but the magazine didn't work. And at that point, I thought I had made the most catastrophic mistake. 
that might be that might affect generations of my future family. I really was like, what the frig did I just do? Why did I how could I be so reckless? But while it was one of those things that people say that like once you're in at the plane, mm-hmm. you had to make your own parachute. And so sure. I was like, all right, hold on, hold on. I see other people and I mean other artists in other cities doing it. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite things about Raleigh is that there's like a ton of people and a ton of money here, but nobody really knows it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, yeah. really, like there's more people than in right. New Orleans. There's more people than Pittsburgh, Raleigh, not the Triangle, Raleigh. Mm-hmm. More people in St. Louis. Uh, and there's all, and the reason is because there's all these companies here, and there's all these universities here. So you got mm-hmm. these like, uh, this like expanse of like money and ag- anyway commerce. So uh, I was like, it's got to be able to work here. If it works there, it it's got. And so, so, so I mean, there there is so much money in Raleigh that in it, it's kind of culture where nobody really knows it, mm. right? So you have all these transplants coming from other uh, cities, but mostly they're coming to work corporate for the most part, right. you know. And so there's just all of these opportunities to plant new flags. And I thought it might get overcrowded, but it, it really hasn't, like, at all. Mm-hmm. Like, the population is, is going so fast now, and nobody's really filling the voids. So it will. So yeah. it will. Yeah. But, like, um, but so when I first started painting murals, there was, like, one or two other people that I was like, okay, here's my competition. Just like you do with a business. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. who, what's the landscape? Who's the competition? And I was like, okay, you and you. Okay, I'm going to watch you. I want to see, oh, they're hiding. And then I started learning little tricks like uh, mural artists would like hide their techniques because there's a lot of stuff that's like tricky. Mm. Uh, but then I started following their girlfriends or like their assistants who, who, were, who were way sloppy with yeah. Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then I was like, ah, I see, I know what you're doing now. Because uh, a lot of mirror work is a lot like uh, magician stuff. Mm. That, that there's a certain magic to seeing it and the wonder of like, dang, how did that happen? Mm. And then when you learn how it happened, you're like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's not as magical. Mm. So there's a lot of that kind of activity. But uh, but yeah, I, 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 I love it here. It's crazy. I love it, man. We've asked a whole lot of questions. But before we get into the last segment, I'm always wondering as a servant leader and a person that inspires you know where do you find your inspiration like where do you find the people that continue to keep you motivated or that next technique such as you talk about so this is going to probably sound corny (laughs) but it's it's dead ass honest i get a lot of it from my family Hmm. right so a lot of it so Hmm. i have two teen girls uh and a wife all everybody struggles in their own unique yeah, way yeah. everybody whether it struggles with uh disorders that they were born with yeah. whether it struggles with recovering from traumas that they've experienced uh that everybody's got their shit and it's one of the things i like to say to the kids like hey, am i allowed to curse on the show no. hey, hey uh, fly brother because yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. people will be like my, my kids dad you know oh the, the neighbors they got you know they're always mm-hmm. So they have dinner and all this kind of everything's perfect, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. They're just not an open book like we are. That's See? right. <laughs> that's right. We're that. Yes, yeah, that's right. Everybody's got their shit. And mm-hmm. so anyway, so with I find a lot of my inspiration, especially right now, with my wife uh, got her real estate license mm-hmm. and is making moves in her own way, like this building this confidence that I've known her since I was 19. Yeah, she's never had this kind of confidence, and she's. Uh, 46, right? Mm, she's just mm. getting her legs turned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my youngest daughter, Michaela, uh, she's just had a rough ass time. She some bad stuff happened with COVID, and, and she had a hard time reco- uh, coming out of it. Mm. And she's a teenager. She's mm. a freshman in high school. But watching her work through this and kind of chop through life in real time and like figure out like, am I gonna am I gonna lean into the trauma and mm. all of the feelings that mm. make me want to kind of degrade my own kind of self. Or do I want to lean into the creative stuff that helps me build? And then watching her like draw, paint, sing, and then blossom. I can't just sit idly by and, yeah. and watch it. I feel like I got to level up, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's amazing. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Man. I don't want to leave my older daughter out either because she's got her own stuff that she works through on a regular basis in her own. And then she's a way more private. So, I, I, you know, but like, in, and watching her just like hit it with a sledgehammer, hit it with a sledgehammer, mm. and not, not stop. And I'm like, all right, cool. We got a squad. I gotta 
this is the team, you know, yeah. Yeah, I work alone, so this is my core squad, and so these are my main inspiration. You no, know, I love most about what you said. You spoke earlier about how you would use the challenges that the kids have and then the superpower that they would use to negate that. And it, it really warms my heart to see you do some of that same things in your own home. Mm. You know, and mm, I didn't even really think and that. you're doing it like you're, you're really doing it like the things that you're giving to others. It had to come from somewhere. Yeah. Right? My mom was, was was real good at a lot of this kind of thing in terms of like that mix of like psychology, like armchair psychology and like a hard work that that weird kind of combination of being present. And that's it really. And I'm mm. glad I said because mm. it's my favorite thing to tell young dads is I'm like. It ain't really that hard. Mm. You just gotta show, up. You gotta show and up. And when you show up, it's not just like you show up and you're like show all the way up. Yeah. Like pay attention because when you show up, oh, you see who your friend, who she's actually hanging with. Oh, you see her getting disappointed in a certain kind of way. You didn't even know that about. Oh, you know, th like if you're just there all the time, not overbearing, but like it, it everything comes together. Yeah, showing up is everything. So. Being present. Being I present. You've heard that one before, right? If you're just checking in with the Bro Code Show, we got my man Sean Kernick. We're live in his home studio with the Bro Code Show. We'll be right back. I so. saw the break. We'll be right back on the Bro Code Show after a brief word from our sponsors. We all we got. The bro code show. Now we don't want to we don't want to zoom past our, our partnerships. Oh yeah, we gotta talk target, about right? that, man. Partnerships and relationships are key. Right? Mm -hmm. We talk about a fist, not a finger. We can do more with more. Yeah. We can do more collectively together. So uh, clearly, we gotta shout out our uh, sponsors, Papa Murphy's Pizza. We appreciate the relationship, continue the relationship. They understand the value of not just partnerships, but voice and amplifying that in a spirit of excellence and we do that very well here on the bro code show for those that may want to connect with the bro code show talk about those partnerships how we can market your brand your idea your vision and your business please connect with us at 919-714-9905 or go to at bro code show on instagram we look forward to what's next it's your boy bro troy bro smith bro kurt and we are the bro code we all we got Welcome back to the Bro Code Show. We're right here with Sean Kernick. Sean, we've asked you a lot of questions, man. Uh, this script right here is called Flip the Script. All right. So in this segment right here, now is your chance to ask us anything you want. Mm. So you can do it individually or collectively. It's your world, man. Mike is yours. All right. So, um... First of all, my question is, how well? How long have you guys been doing this together? <laughs> we, that's a popular one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get that one almost all, all the time. We right? always, yeah, we do. Yeah, but let's start on the right. What you got? Yeah, I think what pandemic start started pandemic. Oh, we, nice. we, yeah, okay. we started we started on Streamyard doing virtual. Okay. Right, just to kind of fill a need because we couldn't go out and do what we do in public. Yeah. And so we started. So it's been since that. I'll let somebody else speak to the shift mm -hmm. of how we ended up where we are now. Yeah, Father's Day is, was our first episode. That's right. Oh, um, nice. Went through many an episode on StreamYard, inviting people from you know, our backyard to Australia. Australia Here we do. You New know, Zealand. Uh, New Zealand. Zealand. Uh, but made the shift to in person not too long ago in December. Uh, and so we've haven't looked back ever since. Nice. Mm -hmm. Dang, you know, just trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know, it was something that was put on the back back burner. Yeah. You know, but uh, like many of things, pandemic birthed many a gifts and many a people. And uh, yeah, we said, hey, let's try it. And uh, went through the progression, you know, the learnings, the lumps and all that. And we still are, yeah. you know, but uh, definitely it goes as far as our work ethic. And, you know, we're in it to win it. What, it, what, what? What you know, if you guys are like a band, right, or mm -hmm. like a superhero like team, what would the soup? What would the what, what's the unique trait that each of you bring to mm. the, the team? Mm. That's good. We always talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. We always start on the right, man. No different. <laughs> Is there like a, yeah. a word or like a certain? So it's kind of like Voltron. Okay. Right when we come together, but I, I don't know how we used it, but. For me, I'm like they call me recon, so I'm always looking at the trends and what's happening and who's who's the next person and like, yo, this is it. Yep. Because you spoke about something earlier about it being something of a show. 
Yeah. And we don't even like to even call it it's just a podcast. It's not just a podcast. Yeah. So yeah. It's that's more my part. Of a podcast experience. It's experience. Yeah. You know what I mean, real code experience, indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the superhero power on that one. Yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking more through the order of it all, just making sure that the pieces fit, um, and that you know we don't get so far ahead of ourselves that we we miss the moments yes uh through and, and the learning moments to make ourselves better throughout the process mm. you said something earlier it made me laugh you say like, it's that mindset of jumping out of the airplane and figuring out and the parachute on the way down that's me so <laughs> yeah. Be, yeah, i'm the mm, let's go you know brick wall it doesn't matter yeah you know, adversity is nothing so uh, i don't need a helmet let's go <laughs> so now, like, so, like, so now he, he's the talking about the play, right? I'm looking, I'm looking at JC. I'm looking at him. I'm like, well, guess I should go too. And I'm out, and JC's like, yeah, but we didn't do I, this I, thing I'm in the play. Like, like, oh man, that's not going to work out. Too well. I see you over there. It's so true too. Yeah. He, he's his name. You need the mix. Man. His name is Bricks. Yeah. Uh, that's his. That's his. That's it. I'm from Brick City. Hold on now. What you doing? Yeah, yeah, but you need that mix um, in order for there to be balance. You mm-hmm. know, you need those kinds that's of. Indeed, true. Uh, especially with a uh, like a trio in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. an interesting dynamic because I know in groups the dynamics can get funky. That's a great question. See, I love that. But you know what? I'll, I'll say that really quick. We actually two things we really love each other. Not like we love each other too. Yes. But we trust each other, man. That's like so there's no, critical. there's no. It's like man, you do your thing. Yeah, and that, that helps. Mm-hmm. The trust bond that connects three unique dudes on a mission that is shared. What's what's in front of you now? I mean, nothing's stopping you. Really, it's just a matter of like level up. What mm-hmm. what's the what's the ideal? Like if you guys could like right now pick an ideal iteration of this. Like what would this kind of come together as in like the perfect kind of goal like north star mm. kind of thing mm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> man uh you know one of the biggest things i think is scaling to a point where we can employ people yeah and help other people yes. kind of come along and do their thing too obviously we'd be doing okay right through that metric mm. but that we can help other people man realize what they want to do and and, mm-hmm. and so that's it for me and wherever that is or wherever that goes and it's gonna happen yeah yeah you know no timetable but it's gonna happen yeah I, I think it'd be pretty cool for this to be replicated somehow some way to where you know we got the bro code north carolina mm-hmm. and we have our subsidiary partners yeah. in, in california giving their spin based off of what's happening in their community and maybe even replicate it to the school level to where these same sort of conversations yeah. can happen in a safe environment among staff students so that they can learn a little bit more about themselves. So mm-hmm. that, that'd be pretty dope. Man, one of the things that we do very well is making people feel comfortable, man. Yeah. You, know, um, we, you talked about it earlier where oftentimes we get so involved in the work, you don't get a chance to really hear the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we provide a platform that allows people to share their stories, uh, to share courageous conversations. And that started with the work that we do with the youth and just is transcending in this thing called the bro code. You said something earlier, uh, it's called the bro code, but this is a lifestyle for us. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is something that we live every day, day in and out. Um, so again, it's not just a podcast, it's a TV show, but it's also an experience. So how do we transcend that experience in every level that we do? So I don't care whether we're in the community center, we're in a local uh, faith-based community, we're in a school, a private or an after-school program, it's a vibe. Mm. And that vibe has value. Oh yeah. Well, I knew you guys were different when we first met because uh, you guys asked my wife to be a camera person like <laughs> right away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right that has we need right, a yeah. second. We need a yeah, shot yeah. from this angle. You might just like holding it, just kind of like vibing. Yeah. And she was like, uh, oh, "Okay." And I was watching her, and then, but you know what happened is that she felt uh, important. Included. Yes. That's yes. Absolutely right. And I and I was thinking about. It, I was like, "Damn, I don't think she's been asked to do something like that in a long ass mm-hmm. time." Did you it, see the glow? Right? You saw the oh, glow. I saw it, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, these guys are different." Mm-hmm. What, what are these? Uh, up to like, how the bros, right? Yeah, I'm like, is it a like, what is it a show? Like, I gotta, I gotta follow these dudes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to see where you guys go. I mean, this is great. Yeah, and man. you're right, the energy is great. Mm. It's really, yeah, it's exciting and it's open. And I find myself actually kind of tumbling information out <laughs> because it's comfortable. You know, it's cool. 
That's it, man. We are an organic environment. If you just mm -hmm. shared the best parts of you, bro, that's what it's really all about. Great segue, though, right? Because this segment right here, we did a little research. You said you've been following us. Well, guess what? We've been following you too. Nice. So, with that being <laughs> said, man, they say that a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't need a thousand now, Sean, but we picked three pictures that really kind of resonate some of the things that stick out about you most through your art. So, I'm going to show you the picture on my phone, okay. and I just want to hear. Who's in the picture, what you were doing, and really, like, why did you share it with the world? Yeah. So we're going to start with this one right here. Yeah, so th this is a, a mural project that we did at uh, Green Level uh, High. Green Level High. Mm. And uh, I was the, the, the guy uh, who runs the art program, Slater Map, okay. who is one of my favorite creatives in the area because he's one of these dudes similar to you guys and myself where it's a weird mix of like creative leadership and also creative ideas mm. you don't really see that too much uh, most creatives i meet are more introverted mm. uh and so mm. uh he also sees connections uh and so he had these, this great idea that we actually haven't fully completed where we would do a mural at green level that would also connect with a, pro a program we did in southeast and so this was the intention was that we would bridge the gap through art uh, and, and spark communication between schools in very two very different communities. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the program that I ended up putting together was one where uh, we spoke with the kids virtually about um, through human history, wall art has been the primary means of telling future generations what was happening in your culture. Mm -hmm. and Prior to the written word, which was a significant amount of time, it was all wall art. It was almost entirely wall art. Mm. And so what we understand about what was going on, uh, both uh, in different levels of society, mm -hmm. uh, it all, it's all from the, the stuff on the wall. And so we did work with the kids to come up with iconography and content that would do that for their time right now. Mm. And so uh, what would reflect what they were going through. And then from that, I... I I basically was the creative and they were the uh, client. Yeah. And so they got to see what that dynamic was like where I would do work and I would have to get approval from them. Mm. Like, is this work? Is this what you're talking about? Like something like this. And then from that, we, uh, we then uh, painted it and I would work with the kids in small groups, teaching them the actual art of painting yeah. traditionally with spray paint. Also, uh, with stencils, they mm. made their own their own art that I, I turned into stencils, and then they could wow. actually okay. have. So it wasn't just painting my stuff; they also uh, were have their own art on there too. Uh, and it was it was awesome. Yeah. And the weirdest part though is that because it's a primarily white school, and the primary features in the mural are non-white mm -hmm. people and the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a group of parents that shit themselves over it, like mm. full blown temper tantrum mm -hmm. I, I they were going after me pretty hard they were digging through my public records they were mm -hmm. i was getting like requests for public records about other jobs they did i was having people email me like mm -hmm. hey we want you to do a, uh, a project over this other uh in my school i work at not giving me the name of school but we want to know like what other project you did how much did they cost and this and that and i was like yeah okay screw your whole shit <laughs> like, <laughs> Do a recon on you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, you got yeah. they picked the wrong one. I'm not even doing it. But so uh, it was interesting, yeah. right? And th th there was one character in the uh, in the mural uh, was a black female with a megaphone and with the BLM T-shirt on, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and uh, that was like the gravity of their focus and um, of the, the people that were upset mm -hmm. and. Slater, the teacher, and the principal, uh, they weren't backing down because they were coming so hard. I was like, y'all, I already went through my Twitter. Like, mm -hmm. like, I went through everything. I'm scared. that they're, they're, I know they're going through everything. I'm like, y you should too. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm saying, like, I can't get fired from working for myself. Like, right. <laughs> this, if anything, this is going to be better for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, because it's going to create a dialogue. Like, but you might get in big trouble if you have something bad in your social media. Anyway, when I started going through all that stuff. Uh, they were just like, you know what? There's nothing that's going to have us change this. Mm. Because if one student saw that shirt and then saw that it was taken away, the impact that it would have on that student would n not be worth anything that would happen to mm. me for that and i was like oh 
I ride with you, dude. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That dude Slayer's cool. He's good people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that's that I love project. It. That yeah. is a great story, man. I'm, I thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Tell us about this one right here. So this one right here is, is actually around the corner from my house. Mm -hmm. uh, it's close here. It's Durant Road Middle. Jobs are never close to my house, so yeah. it was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I literally take two minutes to get there. Uh, and uh, this was another one that was like during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so once I figured out that schools don't have kids in them, I was like, mm, right. smart man. All the way up. Uh, smart man. Yeah, yeah, and they also had budget to that they needed Expo to Expo work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, mm. um, so that's why there's so many uh, student murals or, or, or school murals, and in, in that one, they had a list of people that they wanted to feature, and they had a uh, notable quotes. So they basically took all of like the harder kind of work out of it, mm. and I could just I just painted it, and it was tricky yeah. because there's realism involved, and there's like color variations, and some of the faces are actually pretty small. And so like with spray paint, uh, this size is small, believe it or not, because things like the teeth, this area of the nose, these are the eyes. This is all areas that like if you get it, if you're off on it, it's way off. Mm. Uh, and so some of the faces in that are like half of that or even less are like this big mm -hmm. so you really have to like hit it in a way because spray paint's either all the way on or all yeah. the way off it's like playing a guitar or something like if you don't hit it right it's wrong uh mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm i'm particularly proud of that one because there's so much technical execution in there yeah awesome awesome man tell us about this one right here yeah so this one is actually uh this is a crazy project because it's 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 one of the it's one of the holes at a uh, putt putt place um, called Par Party yeah, something. Yeah, fifty four. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. was telling you guys about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Party, dang, They've got three it? eighteen uh, holes. It's all indoors. Yeah, indoors. That's, yes. that's right. It's yeah. Cool. yeah, I'm talking it's, to you about it. We're it's still the bar in there. Yeah, it's actually really cool. It's it really is. cool. Uh, yeah. And so I, I did a, a big mural in their like entrance when they first opened, and uh, and then they were like, "Yo, I got this idea. I got this Spider Man sculpture." We want to do a whole theme, and so we had this like it's like an alleyway where I like painted graffiti, like as if Spider Man did it, mm -hmm. uh, like webs and stuff. And then, uh, and then there's this scene here where the, the goal was that people would want to take pictures, oh, yeah, and make it look like you're in the alleyway uh, yeah. with them because it is confusing because it looks like the sculpture is part of the paint mm -hmm. and uh, there's there's a lot of depth to it mm -hmm. but if you i mean you can kind of look if you look close to that there's variations in the wall at the top yeah it's different textures it's some of it's cement some of it's like some of it's like uh, i don't know, looks like cloth or something i mean it's mm. it's actually three totally different surfaces wow that it's neat how spray paint can like unify that mm -hmm. make all the other stuff just disappear yeah yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I know we talk, spoke earlier about Spider-Man, the whole Philadelphia thing. So yeah. I'm sure that probably hit a little different for you, full too. Full circle, yeah. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> yeah. I was almost thinking when I saw it that that's what you did. Like, I didn't know. But it does say that. Party Shack. Party Shack. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Party that's shack. it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Wow. Well, and that's a small business, you know. Uh, date night. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a great idea for date night. And for me, like, hanging with you guys, like, I just love... When people just throw in and go at it with it's one of the neat things about the job that I do, the work that I do, is that um I do a lot with small business. Yeah. And whenever I like bump into one, I'm like, ooh, good, good. I'm gonna really try my best because you know, it's, you're putting it all on the line. I mean it really is such a risk. It's one of the things that bothers me about how uh, you know, capital capital gains, I think it's called when you get a lot of money off of your benefits from the stock market that it's tax the tax free uh i think it's tax free but like because of the risk but like the biggest risk i've ever seen is like a family starting a business mm -hmm. there's no write-off for that like that's an enormous risk for that family like and there's no breaks at that level like come on speaking about just business tell the people how can they get a hold of you yeah what are, what are your tags uh your yeah so um, my my website is sean Kernick, uh, dot com, and then i'm on uh instagram at Sean O. Roxwell, which is one of my many different kind of names. I, you know, I wrote Sean O. In doing graffiti, and for years I went by Sean O. Go Hard, but I got to the point where I was not trying to go that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ass. Like, I didn't want to be that 44 year old go hard. I'm not going that hard. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm die. before 10. Like, I'm right. trying to die. Yeah. It's not healthy to go that hard. <laughs> I just rock well. That's it. Uh, oh, and so, yeah, so Shano.Roxwell on Instagram. And I'm on Twitter, Sean Kernick. 
too. I believe that's I meant there. But uh, yeah, it's a unique name. Last name is like there's only another one Sean Kernick in the world that I'm aware of. So yeah. crazy to find. Good stuff. Good stuff. We got one last segment. This one right here is called Calling Them Out. Calling them out. <laughs> I believe that's your camera right over there, man. What I would like you to do is use that camera right there. All right. And. Pull well, me. let me ask you this. Let me you, double check it, real quick. I, we want to make sure I get yeah, it right. Yeah, man, get it right, man. We want to make sure it's right. I but got I'm, it. I got it. I'm yeah, curious, though. Curious. Like, I, I don't want to assume. Have Have you had a good time on the bro coach show? Kid me, dude, this is blast, dude. I'm. I mean, not to sound strange, but like one of the the the, the biggest bummers of going out on my own is that I am on my own. Mm. Like, you don't you don't get the collaboration, the bouncing ideas off. It really actually is pretty unhealthy in general. So mm. like for anybody looking to go out on their own, I suggest making sure that you have a group, a crew, mm. somebody that's gonna be honest with you about your work so that you don't get lost on a path, you yeah. know. Um, and so having you guys here is just Amazing. As you can tell, I'm going long-winded on a lot of these answers. Hey, I love it. We're having a good time. It's like sitting down with the bros, right? Yes, Indeed. Yes. So I want you to look in that camera right there and tell the people, look at, give the at symbols, their name, whatever you need. Let them know they need to come on the Bro Coach. Gotcha. All right. So first off is a special guest. I don't know if you guys, you guys know him? Special. We're about to. He's a DJ, he's a, he was a DJ for years, uh, super talented. And then while I was migrating into the murals, mm. he was migrating into sign painting, okay. traditional sign painting, old school. Uh, and uh, I've never met, I met a lot of creatives, I never mm. met anybody who put that level of focus and practice in to get to the, just the start, mm. starting line. Yeah. On his own, I get there, we, we were sharing a warehouse at the time, because we did Oak City Hustle together also. But, uh, and he would be there before me, just doing letters all day, mm. all day. And I, he didn't get on the drums, he'd drum for a while, he'd get back letters all day. I'm like, mm. is that like for a job? Like, what are you doing? He's like, no, I just gotta get good. And now he's insanely talented, like super, super talented in a great, interesting interview. Um, who else I got? I got Fonte, might kill me for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a homie. He's the, one of the smartest, wittiest mm. people I know in the area. It's like a privilege to be a friend of his, truly. He's a, he's a person that I've reached out to a number of times mm -hmm. uh, on my journey because there's things like, I don't, like, I get paid in bunches. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll do, like, a job and I'll get a big old, like, pile. And then uh, I didn't really know how to manage that because my whole mm -hmm. life was, like, paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. Mm -hmm. So there's a rhythm to that. So when you just get, like, money dumped on you, I was like... Fonte, how do you do that? Like, and mm -hmm. so he had gave me, like, the best advice that I was able to employ. And benefit from it. So, mm -hmm. and, and and there's been a number of cases like that. And so, he's just a super talent. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I think he'd be uh, a great interview on the show. Um, I think Candy Carver is another one. Do you guys know her? Not yet. Not yet. About to though. Cool. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Uh, so she is an artist uh, based out of Durham. Okay. I I tend to um, uh, have a special place in my heart for. Uh, African-American black female artists. Mm -hmm. I feel like out of all of the creative kind of sectors, the visual arts and black females somehow get overlooked mm -hmm. more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people would be hard pressed to name three. And so, uh, so, so for me, whenever I see somebody doing their thing, like she does, yeah. she's super talented and, uh, and, 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 and really kind of deserves as many spotlights as we can kind of shine. And she's funny, and she does great podcast also um, with uh, the bishop. What's his name? Um, oh, dang, he's going to kill me for this. Kareem, um, oh, whatever, man. I'll, I'll remember it later. Uh, it'll smack me in the back of the head for forgetting <laughs> it. But, um, but anyway, she does podcasts, and she's... Super fun. So she'll be great too. Good stuff. That Good three? stuff. That is. All right, great. Man. That's it. We look forward to it, man. We need all y'all on the Bull Code Show right here. To sit down with us, man. So we have done a whole lot, man. We asked you a question earlier, and it was like, uh, what we asked about was the word to describe himself, right? That's right. Uh, what do you say, Kurt? Persistence. Got yes. something for you, man. So we got our two dollar bill here, which we give to guests. We write "You Matter" on the front. We also have your name on the front, Sean. On the back, it says "The Bro Code Show," and we wrote your word "persistence." Kind of from listening to you, man, we, we kind of get it. Like yeah. you, you know, you're holding your family up, 
and and you're creating this business, but you're also creating this art for so many people, man. So we appreciate you having that level of persistence. I mean, yeah. Thank you. I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, persistence is, mm -hmm. is important to me. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things they never tell you in school. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. All right. Yeah. You know, I, ha I only have one other $2 bill, and I keep it in my to top drawer of my uh, toolbox here uh, mm -hmm. that my father-in-law, who passed away wow. far too young, had given to me. So this will uh, sit right next to it. Right? Yeah. We're in a place where I use every day. I see it every day. So I appreciate that. Awesome. That's it, thank man. you. Just like you and us, uh, two dollar bills unique. It's rare. Mm, you know, yeah, it's so, true. Something to think about, man. I think that really speaks volume of uh, all of the wisdom and things that you share on the show, man. So, yeah, glad we can give it to you, brother. Now we always end the show the same way, on a positive note, and today is no different. So, tonight's quote says, "Be the reason someone feels welcomed, seen, heard, valued, loved, and supported." It's your boy, Bro Troy, Bro Smith, Bro Kurt, and we are the Bro Code. Bro Code. Yeah, that one was horrible too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the damn, the damn I be spreading the message on the corner where the thugs be. And Rock said, be careful when the world starts to love me. I've been getting recognition. A lot of stuff in the world. I'm gonna for the margin. I'm gonna stay. I'll get you walk on water if you don't stand on faith. It's like I'm going through circles. I'm in that same old place. I see you closing the curtains, but I got something to say. I got something to say. I mean, I just don't get it as if they can't see you making the way. City lights, what up? He's preparing the way. City lights, what up? How could you live for the more team promise today? The Broco TV show was created to amplify the voices of others and share courageous stories of community leaders, organizations, and businesses that are doing great things. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., you can catch Bro Troy, Bro Kirk, and Bro Smith for another courageous conversation. You can find those conversations on our YouTube channel at Broco TV Productions and also our audio podcast channels, which are on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts at The Bro Code Show. Tap in to The Bro Code Experience. We all we got. We always say that hope plus options equals success. When there's a lack of hope, oftentimes gravitate towards unfavorable decisions. But when we can provide hope plus options, our children will ultimately be better. Uh, through love, consistency, opportunity, and exposure, that's how we really touch these kids. That's how we empower them, that's how we inspire them, and that's how we encourage them. And that's what we do well here at Wine